This little lock over here does not provide any security or privacy. All it means is that your browser trusts the certificate that the server is presenting. If you want to learn more about how this works, stick around. This is Security Union. This locks means that your browser trusts the certificate that the server is presenting, but it does not mean that you have to trust the contents that the website is rendering to your computer. It also means that all the traffic between the server and your computer is encrypted. Even extremely untrustworthy sites can make Chrome show that little lock. Why is this? A site administrator requests a certificate from a certificate authority. It is the responsibility of the certificate authority to verify that the site administrator owns the domain that she or he is asking a certificate for. And pretty much that's it. There is no further validation from the certificate authority. The certificate authority does not evaluate the integrity of the site administrator or vets the contents of the website. Your computer contains a set of certificate authorities that it trusts. To demonstrate that, let's go ahead and open the keychain. Let's see what we find. You can see that VeriSign, Apple, GoDaddy are some of the companies listed as certificate authorities. I just want to emphasize that a valid certificate verifies that a given site administrator is the owner of a domain. But this does not mean that the contents of the website are safe. Let's take this as an example. So the problem, in my opinion, is that when I see the lock, to me, it means that Chrome, Safari, or whatever browser I'm using is telling me that that website is safe. So we, here we can see that a malicious website can present a valid certificate. In this case, Cloudflare signed the certificate for this website without checking the contents of the website presumably without checking the contents of the website or the nature of the services provided. So how can we determine if a website is trustworthy given that they all show this little lock regardless of trustworthiness? Well, first step to me is to leverage situational awareness, meaning if you are looking for illegal services, piracy, things like that, you, I guarantee you're going to end up in websites that are going to try to steal your information. So just, just don't go to sketchy websites. And if you really have to, then just make sure that they use a virtual machine or something. Okay, so what else is out there? Well, I came across a couple of tools that are supposed to help to identify malicious websites. Let's, um, so there's transparencyreport.google.com. I ran our malicious website with that tool and it came back as uh, clean, which means that it was not able to, to catch that this was a malicious website. I also tried VirusTotal, which is owned by Google, and it didn't identify it either. In my opinion, you're a little bit uh, of, you're, you're on your own, pretty much. Well, another thing is you want to verify the URL of the website that you're visiting. A very common example here in the US is banking websites. What hackers will do is they buy domains that are very similar to the real domain. They just like add a type or something. So let me show you an example. Uh, here we have two websites. Uh, can you tell which one is fake? Well, they, they are pretty much the same. That's because it is possible to extract the CSS and the HTML from any website these days and then just like clone it and then tweak it to your, to your, at your will. In this case, probably they, when you log in through the malicious website, you end up sending the credentials to, to the bad guys. There is another type of attack where the hacker will target a DNS. So that's domain name resolution protocol. And that's the system that your computer uses to transform uh, 
URL address into an IP. Uh, this is a much more advanced uh, topic and I would like to cover that in a separate video. The bottom line is that the hacker rewrites the IP for a given domain. So say, I don't know, chase.com is supposed to target IP123, but the hacker goes in and changes that so that instead of being 123, is 1234, where 1234 one, is a, an IP that the hacker controls. Usually DNS poisoning has to be executed in conjunction with another attack to get a fake cert certificate, in this case for chase.com. So you can see that this is a little bit more convoluted, but it has happened. And I'm looking forward to share that with you. That is it. I hope you learned something and see you in the next one. Bye.